My next one is, um, and I'll just tell you the title of the one before because I didn't say it, but it was Mental Fatigue from a Smartphone Reduces Volume Load in Resistance Training. That's the title that people want to look it up. Um, and then this one is Predicting Energy Expenditure of an Acute Resistance Training Bout in Men and Women. Now, I found this so interesting and something that I've actually wanted to know the answer to for such a long time because you will see these these camps of like cardio versus resistance training you know there's purists who are like you just need resistance training that is how to become lean you'll lose body fat you'll gain muscle you'll have the best physique you can have and you'll have a healthy body weight then you've got the other camp who are like no you must include cardio it is so important for so many other reasons you shouldn't just do resistance training so this uh paper and and let me just say when, when I'm talking about the benefits of exercise, how many calories you burn in your session is probably the least important aspect of the benefits of exercise. Like if I were to create a hierarchy, caloric energy expenditure would not be up there at the top. It's, it's about bone health, muscle health, metabolic you know, adaptations, insulin sensitivity, the mood benefits, all of these things I would put ahead of just how many calories you burn. Um, I certainly wouldn't make calories like the, the main focus of the reason why you exercise. Um, but so this subject was looking at energy expenditure to see how many calories you burn in your workout. So it had 52 subjects and they performed a resistance training program using machine exercises. So it wasn't free weights. It was actually, it's easier to control machines because you can control range of motion, technique differences it get a bit tricky with free weights. So I like that they use machines. And these machines were actually pneumatic resistance. So they use air as the resistance. It's like compressed air. It's not loaded plates. It's not actually weights. It's air, um, which has pros and cons. There may be some like ecological validity issues because not many people use pneumatic machine-based exercises. Most people are using probably free weights and loaded plates and stuff like that. But the, the exercises they did were leg press, chest press, leg curl, pull down, knee extension, tricep, push down and bicep curls. So like a really full body uh, workout with sort of the main exercises that people would do. Uh, and they did two to three sets to failure with 70% of their predicted one rep max. So again, like a really standard strength and conditioning protocol, 70% one rep max usually lands you in like an eight to 12 rep range. Uh, obviously there's going to be in inter-individual differences, but for the most part, um, and they, on average, they rested about 90 seconds between sets. So again, like such a nice standard protocol that people do in the gym frequently. The way they actually set this up was that every two minutes you have to begin your next exercise. Most exercises last about 30 seconds per set. So it ends up being 30 seconds of work, 90 seconds of rest, move on to the next exercise. They do two to three sets to failure. If they couldn't get eight reps, they didn't do a third set. So you always did. they always did two sets, but if they got more than eight on their second set, they would do a third set. That was just trying to manage fatigue. So anyway, they did testing beforehand to see people's rep maxes, and then they used a metabolic cart, which you'd be familiar with in sort of VO2 testing where they are seeing respiratory exchange. So it's basically mask is on, you're doing your workout, you're breathing gas exchange, and they're calculating energy expenditure, they're calculating resting metabolic rate, and you know they do this during the workout. So 30 minutes before it and during the workout, which is – Quite interesting. And what they were looking at was the excess calorie expenditure, not the total, because they take into account that for that hour that you're in the gym, your body is going to be burning a baseline amount of calories. They're looking at what is the excess, how many extra on top of baseline. Um, so, and they also did a, um, a sub analysis of, of just about nine subjects who, if you've heard of EPOC, obviously, the EPOC effect that people talk about a lot. They also did a sub-analysis, which we'll get to in a second, which I'm glad they did. So the results of the study, they found that men burnt two times the amount of calories in the workout than females, right? In, absolute However, number, in, in an correct. absolute amount. Exactly. But when controlled for lean mass, very similar. Roughly 2.8 calories per pound of lean mass for men and 2.4 for women. So very, very close. That but in sense. absolute... Yeah, exactly. Just, just a bigger body, a bigger machine. That's what's going to happen. But I'm interested to hear, before I tell you the results, how many calories above baseline do you think these subjects burnt during their resistance training session? As I mentioned, it, it was about, let's call it roughly an hour in the gym, two to three sets for all those exercises. 
90 seconds rest, how many calories would you burn lifting weights? 300. It's quite a good guess. So it's going to depend on a, on a number of factors. Previous studies have looked at high volume sessions and volume we, we've spoken about, sets times reps times load. High volume workouts for men can burn about 300 to 500 depending on technique things. So like really to, to, to understand volume load, you also have to understand range of motion because you, you can do three sets of 10 to a half squat, three sets of 10 to a full squat. The total work done is bigger when you do a larger range of, range of motion. Okay, but we'll leave that out for a second. In this study, men burnt 161 calories above baseline and women 87. Total above baseline, 87 calories for a woman doing all of the eight exercises, two to three sets, you know. So already it's like, wow, that's actually quite low. Like I was surprised at how low it was because I know for even myself, I've convinced myself that I'm burning a lot of calories in the gym, but maybe, maybe we're not. Then they looked at EPOC, this excess post-oxygen consumption. So it's after your, the idea is that after your workout, your body is trying to restore homeostasis and bring everything back to baseline, and there's an energy cost to doing that. So your heart rate, your temperature, the, met, the metabolites and the substrates that were built up during your workout, you've got to bring them back down to baseline. So I was looking at the effect of EPOC. How many <laughs> excess calories do you think could be attributed to the EPOC effect? So this is the 30 minutes after the workout, because after 30 minutes, they found that they went back to baseline. The epoch effect was almost done. I mean, in other studies, the epoch effect can last 24 to 72 hours, depending on the workout. But for this particular workout, which is something that I think a lot of people would do a workout just like this, the epoch effect was only about 30 minutes. How many calories did they burn? This episode is proudly brought to you by 38 Terra. Try 38 Terra's DMN prebiotic, the science-based daily multivitamin for your gut microbes, a simple and delicious way to take your gut health to the next level. Now back in stock in new and improved packaging for customers living in the United States, Australia, and New Zealand. Get 10% off your DMN at 38terra.com using the code THEPROOF. That's 38TERA.com and use the coupon code THEPROOF for 10% off. 10. After their workout. Yeah, eight to seven. Se seven to eight. Seven to eight <laughs> calories. So like... You will hear people saying, you know, like the benefits of resistance training is that you get this calorie burn after you're done. And yeah, EPOC is real. It's a real effect. But the magnitude of effect is so small. And the meaningfulness in terms of, you know, burning body fat is so little. Equivalent probably, to eating a jelly bean, something like, like that. Exactly. Like the, it's so easy to, it's like it's so hard to burn 300 calories in a workout so easy to eat 300 calories if you're just a little heavy on the olive oil or you take an extra scoop of peanut butter like it can just go down so easily well the other thing that kind of comes to mind and um i'm not sure how relevant this is here but so i think you said was it around 150 160 calories for a man, for a man? Yeah. yeah right well herman ponce's research kind of comes to mind to here and for this you would they would need to continue to track energy expenditure over the like the next 24 hour period but at least in his work he believes that through the constrained energy model that the body will even compensate later on to expend less energy so even though there's 160 calories they're picking up during that workout it is theoretically it is quite possible there is some research to suggest that over that 24 hour period the body sort of dials down metabolism in other places such that that net 160 calories extra burned is even smaller across the 24-hour period. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. So that's an important point. Another important point is this is just talking about this style of workout, okay? So it's just like a traditional straight sets programming. There are other forms of resistance training where you could see way more calories burned and a larger epoch effect. So if you're doing supersets, if you're not resting 90 seconds, if you're doing you know, antagonistic training, so like pushing, superset by pulling, then you go to your legs, then your core, push, pull, legs, core. Think about CrossFit, think about F45, like those kinds of styles of training, you're burning way more calories because obviously the heart rate's elevated, there's, you know, you get, you're sweating more, breathing more, like all of your metabolic processes are ramped up. So this is just talking about this specific style of straight sets, how a lot of people do train. 
So what I found interesting was the comparison between an aerobic workout, so doing like so, sort of a dedicated cardiovascular workout compared to resistance training when it comes to how many calories you expend during the workout. And I know Herman Pons is very interesting research around sort of, is it the constrained energy model where you basically save resources and over the course of 24 hours, you may end up sort of like ending up a back at baseline in terms of total calorie expended. But some of the research in the exercise physiology world does show that even though you, you do compensate, you never quite fully compensate for all calories. You still will create a net deficit. So if you look at the calories burned during aerobic exercise, so if you take the average, say, let's say a person who weighs 68 kilos, they burn about 100 calories jogging 1.6 kilometers on flat ground. Okay. That takes 10 minutes. That's roughly 10 minutes or 10 calories per minute. Okay. So going for a one mile or a 1.6 kilometer run, on average, if you're about 68 kilos, you're going to burn 100 calories. We just said if you're in the gym for an hour as a male, you're going to burn about 160 calories. So if you're if you're a bigger body, like 90 kilos, and you're running faster, because that's a pretty conservative pace, like 10 minutes to run 1.6 Ks, a lot of people could do that. But if you're running faster, you could burn about 130 calories for 1.6 kilometers. So like the calorie expenditure from, from aerobic training is a lot higher than just doing some weightlifting in the gym. Um, so in, in this study, the one I just mentioned, they're burning about 1.7 calories per minute for women and about three calories per minute for a man. Very low. It's a very slow rate. So I think people do get confused about how much they're burning in the gym. It's probably not that much. So ways that you can sort of get around that is, as I said, supersets, um, increasing work, total workload, workout density, or if you don't care about the calories being burnt in resistance training, which you shouldn't, just do your bloody workout, get stronger, get bigger, improve your bone health. Don't worry about it. But if, you're, if you are going in there thinking, oh, I burnt 500 calories today, I'm going to eat 500 calories extra, you're probably going to end up in a surplus because you're not burning that much. Yeah, that's a good point for people to be kind of thinking about. And like you said at the outset, like if you were to list off all the benefits of exercise, even even cardio, even though more calories are burned during that 10-minute run than a kind of 60-minute resistance training exercise, uh, calories would not be at the top of the list. You know, we'd, we'd be talking about strength. We were talking about bone mineral density. We were talking about cardiac health. We were talking about mental health. You know, all those sorts of things probably way, way above calories. Exactly. It's 2025 and I have made the decision to join Function Health to help monitor and optimize my health. And honestly, after getting set up, I am wondering what took me so long. Function makes it extremely easy to track important biometric information over a lifetime. Information that you can use in real time to make important health decisions. Function gives you over 100 lab tests covering your entire body every year. Heart, hormones, liver, kidneys, thyroid, metabolic health, heavy metals, autoimmunity, nutrients, and more. Five times more testing than your typical physical for $499 a year. A lot cheaper than if you were to order all of these tests individually. That's if you can order them. Take ApoB and LP little a, for example, two very important tests for determining your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Yet, as outlined in multiple episodes on this show by Dr. Thomas Dayspring, they can be incredibly difficult to order with your local doctor. Using Function is very straightforward. You join and then visit one of their 2000 US lab locations. I went to one here in LA where I live. It's very easy and boom, your results are tracked over time in one secure place. No shady upselling, no gimmicks, just your results beautifully presented and science-based insights from doctors to help you optimize your health. Skip the 400,000 person wait list today at functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill and join me on the path to nerd level health optimization. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill. 